Welcome to episode number four of Stupid Human Interviews, where I, the stupid human, do my best to interview someone less stupid than me. Are you ready? Pay attention. Today's guest released a series of YouTube videos way back in the year 2015 titled Flat Earth Clues. And since then, he has become one of the leading proponents of the Flat Earth movement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man known around the globe as Mr. Flat Earth, Mr. Mark Sargent. Hey, Mark. Nice to have you here. Hi. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So let's get right into it. The uh, very first question. Yeah. And probably the most important. Yeah. How old were you when you realized that all you really wanted to accomplish in life was to own a Jeep? <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, I was uh, 15 when I uh, when I first wanted to buy a Jeep. And have you bought one yet? Do you own a Jeep? Nope. Nope. But you still I want changed to. my mind. Peer pressure. That was when I listened to peer pressure a lot. Uh, before I wanted to own a Jeep, I wanted to own a Trans Am. <laughs> and, but I did want to own a Jeep at one point. And, uh, Every I real a man does. I know. And I, I had some friends that, that owned Jeeps, various kinds. And it's like, eh, it's okay. I, I just, I, but I, I ended up, my final decision was I didn't want to be a car guy. I was, I've never been a car guy. In fact, I have owned the same car. A Jeep is not a car. What? Just so that we're clear. A Jeep is not a car. A Jeep is a Jeep. I have never been an automotive guy for, mm. if, I, I, I've I'll owned, allow that. I've owned, uh, the, the car I've driven for the last 20 years is literally a, a Chrysler 300C, drove it, you know, uh, ordered it from the factory. And after a while, it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm just not not that guy. I don't watch Top Gear on a regular basis, even though it's it's an interesting show. I've just never been that guy. Good question, though. So now for why you're here. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, I would have flat out dismissed anything, any ideas or conspiracy theories that didn't align with the narratives that I grew up with, probably right. most of us grew up with. Right. But lately, in the last couple of years, I distrust so much of what the government and big corporations and pretty much in the media, I, be, I distrust so much that at least now I'm open to listen to even the craziest ideas to sure. see at least if they make sense. Yeah. So give me the elevator pitch as to why you think the earth is flat, and then we'll get into more details of all the points, but just give me the quick the, the overview. Quick one? Okay. Yeah, the uh, elevator pitch. Why? Tell me why the earth is flat. The, the quick one, and it goes into the origin, which is, uh, I like you, uh, I mean, I didn't even, I'm older, uh, I didn't even think there was conspiracies until I went and saw uh, Oliver Stone's JFK in the theater back in the early, early 90s. I mean, literally, I did not think that people lied in, in power. It's like, why would you? You know, with the exception for money. And after I saw that, I, over the next several decades, uh, I went through just about every conspiracy you could think of, never um, uh, never looked back because I never got married or had kids. So I had tons and tons of free time on my hands, and to the point where I pretty much finished the internet, I thought. I'd have an, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you can think of, except for Flat Earth, because then it's like, well, I'm still, I, I had an opinion on every conspiracy, but I'm still not going to look at Flat Earth, because it's dumb. It's retarded, right? Then I thought, okay, well, I'm not getting any younger. Put it on my bucket list. It's like, oh, I'll shut down Flat Earth in a weekend, and the weekend turned into weeks, which turned into months, which turned into nine months. And then eventually I realized I could not prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Uh, there were, you think you can. Everybody does. The t-shirt reads, uh, I became a Flat Earther because I tried to d disprove it. And that's when in 2015, I just gave up. It's like I woke up, had that Jerry Maguire moment. I know I'm using some pop culture references where I woke up and I said, you know what? I give up. I'll, I'm going to put make a series of videos out there, put them out to the hive mind of the internet because the hive mind is very smart. They don't miss anything. And say, okay, I can't prove the globe. Tell me where I'm wrong. And the hive mind came back in mass and they said, all sorts of people were messaging me, and we can talk about that later, and said, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not crazy. Here's why. And uh, apparently, I was like one of the first people to actually broach the topic in the modern era. You know, the, you know we call, I call it Flat Earth 2.0, where I was like, yeah, put all my contact information out there and, and said, hey, come at me. And, uh, and they didn't. 
which was awesome. The, the response has been fantastic. And that was, as you said, back in 2015, coming up on 10 years. All right. So as someone that is new, such as myself, to the exciting and dynamic world of flat earthery, right. how, how can I go outside right now and see for myself some of these obvious signs that the earth is flat? Okay. Uh, the real quick ones. Uh, this was posed to me by... Um, uh, a physicist out of Georgetown uh, through, a, through a media company, and they said, come up with five science-y things. So, real quick. Um, first one would be long-distance photography, which is if the curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per mile squared, you should only be able to see so far. Eventually, you're going to be, the, the curve is literally going to turn into a mountain. You know, it's, it's going to get really, really, you know, you will not be able to see, you cannot see on the other side of a hill, eventually. And I don't care how much refraction you, you think you built in. And that that we can always see too far. I mean, I didn't tell people. I never came up with it. People immediately, when they started looking into this recently, they just start running down to every body of water you can think of because water lays flat and shooting lighthouses and shooting boats off in the distance and shooting So how land. far does the science say we should only be able to see? What's the farthest? Like if, if I go to the ocean and I watch a boat, uh, a ship sail away, how far? What's the furthest that's supposed to be able to be seen from? Well, without binoculars, if a six-foot guy is standing on the shore, if it's eight inches per mile squared, you should only, your vision's pretty limited anyway, uh, less than less than five miles, right? Depending, again, so at depending five on, miles, it should, according to the science, which I'm not denying at this point, uh, it, it should start to go over the... The curve uh, of the ball, right? Uh, again, it, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some quick math, which would be so if it's, if it's eight inches per mile squared, um, let's say it's ten miles, that would be ten times ten, which is a hundred times eight, which is eight hundred inches, right? So any object that's taller than eight hundred inches at ten miles, you it should be on the other you sh it should be on the other side of the curve. However, it's not stairs. That math gets really you know it starts getting more severe as you go further. So fifty miles, which is fifty times fifty times eight, is almost seven. 1700 feet. So when you grab what really changed was uh, HD cameras more than anything. I mean, 30 years ago, you couldn't go out there with the cameras, just be a pixelated, blurry mess. But now, you know, cheap, 500 bucks off the shelf. You can zoom in on things that you really couldn't zoom in before. You could bring boats back into frame, which were gone. And we've got so many videos out there where the boat's gone, right? And you crank up, you just crank up the zoom and it's there. It's now, you know, crystal clear in frame. And it's got to be on a calm day, unfortunately, because uh, uh, we try to stress that to the trolls, because if there's any waves, right, the waves that are closer to you will block a lot more, right? So my finger isn't covering my face, right? But now it is, because it's, it's closer to you. And uh, so it's got to be on a really, really calm day. So really cold days over ice is nice to, to do as well. But that's, that was, that's what brings most people into Flat Earth is long-distance photography, more than anything. All right. And so and another thing I wanted to mention is that I, as we sit here talking, I can't fact check anything. So we're going oh, sure. leave that up sure, to the, of course. Leave of that up to the trolls and the scientists in but, the comments. Yeah, please, please go ahead. So uh, the second one really quick was one my favorite, but most people don't. Again, most people are visual. And I don't want to pick on the general public being dumb as a bag of hair, but <laughs> mob but. mob mentality. Uh, which is uh, gravity versus the vacuum of, of space, which is, uh, if you guys know anything about, you know, we're breathing in 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen, give or take. We'll throw away the trace gases for now because it gets messy. And a vacuum is nothing, right? There's nothing in there. And it's tough to visualize because it's invisible. You know, you, you, you can say, oh, yeah, that, that, that's a vacuum chamber over there. But visually you can't tell any difference, which is works out very well for NASA. So if there's a vacuum chamber above you, right, in your second floor of your building, you have a valve and you pop that valve. It's not like the movies, right? It's not this, oh my God, you know, wind and two minutes of air left, get the duct tape type thing. It's instantly, it's violent. Um, you can ask anybody that works in uh, deep sea rigs or submarines and stuff like that. Pressure equalization is no joke. It's awful. And the question is, right, so when you go outside, why is our atmosphere still here? Why is, you know, what, why hasn't it been just shredded by the, the infinite vacuum of space, the ultimate vacuum chamber? And the only response is gravity. And it's like, you mean the Gravity same because the gas, the, uh, the nitrogen, the oxygen is, has mass, even right. though it's very light, right? Right. So that gravity from the earth yeah. 
pulls it in, keeps it in. Yes. Yeah. Has okay. to, has to be holding it down. And, and it's like, well, oh, okay. But the, that same, very same gravity can't keep the air in your room from rushing upstairs to a very small, inefficient vacuum chamber. And the argument, it's a circular argument on the science side. It's, well, if it wasn't gravity, we'd be dead. And it's like, well, unless there's another option, like, you know, it's an enclosed system, like you're in a snow globe. They call it air pressure for a reason. And and they're going, no, no, it, they, they just keep looping back on themselves. It's like, okay, or whatever. So they're so, starting at the premise that yes. there is gravity. Instead yes. of saying, what is causing this? They are starting at the assumption that it is gravity. It has to be gravity. It has to be gravity because if it isn't gravity, there would be no atmosphere. And it's like, well, yeah, that's that's our point. That's our question to you. And it's like, well, there, it, it has to be gravity. It's like, no, no, it doesn't have to be gravity. So you're saying that they can't prove or have not proven that it's gravity? No, no. As a matter of fact, gravity, it's one of those little known things in science, which they don't talk about. And thank God Neil, Neil Tyson has brought it up a few times, which is gravity is just a theory. Gravity is one of those things. Uh, every scientist will eventually tell you. Physicists hate it when I bring it up to them. They, I, I say, tell me about gravity, right? And, and, and I go, grab, they'll say, Gra okay, gravity is a theory, but it doesn't matter because it's repeatable and we, we know the symptoms of gravity. I go, okay, so you can tell me what it does. You can't tell me what it is. So it's a theory, you know, it's like, yeah, I dropped something, right? You know, of course, right? It falls, right? Well, what is it? Well, it's like, well, it's a mysterious molecular force that pulls things to a center of a ball. It's like, okay. So what is it in flat earth? For me, it's a mysterious molecular force that pulls things straight down. Combine that with electrostatics and density and buoyancy. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty much on the same ground you are. I'm sure we won't get any comments about that. That's um, I'm, I'm going to get back to that. Um, why then in your world... Mm -hmm. Why do they tell everyone that the that the uh, world is a, the the globe, the Earth is a sphere? Right. Um, wh what what's the point? What are they hiding? Why? Why why hide it? Why why hide it? And so, and it's a wonderful question. Um, the the t the two simple answer would be power. The answer I came up with is just bad timing, which is we didn't even figure it out. The short version is if it was a snow globe, we didn't even have memory because our, our civilization has not been advanced for very long, right? Heck, we've only been interesting for the last century, give or take. So if you don't find out that it's flat because you don't have the tech to figure it out yourself until roughly 1960, do you ch tell the general population, right? In 1960. And I was mulling that over for a while. And it's like, if I was back then in 1960, let's say I was running some Illuminati group, you know, long table, dark, and everybody's smoking for some reason, and talking in low tones like Batman. Uh, no, you wouldn't tell them because the, the repercussions, uh, men in power don't take chances like that, which is, think of the, the big three um, uh, academically, right? You'd have to rework every university library in every country ever, you know, uh, everything from not just astronomy and astrophysics, you know, biology, hydrology, archaeology, all that stuff. I mean, you'd have to empty libraries, rebuild them back up. Wouldn't that give the big book industry more work and <laughs> yes. make them more rich? <laughs> big book needs to get in on this. Yes, they should. Uh, economically, I mean, come on, the, the stock markets are so integrated nowadays, anything, you know, twitches them out. So it, that would, you'd have to shut down, you'd have to suspend trading, not that you shouldn't anyway, suspend trading for months to figure out how that works. But the big thing, unfortunately, uh, is the religious aspect of it, which is you're, you're telling the five major religious houses of the world, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, you're giving them leverage against science, the entire institution of science simultaneously. And you're saying, oh yeah, by the way, you should probably show some, some restraint when we give you this. Oh yeah, that, that's not, science would never be able to recover. Uh, they, the, the backlash would be huge. Those three aspects, just those three alone. Uh, I'm sorry, if I was in that room, it'd be like, yeah, we're going to hold on to this for as long as possible. And it was easy enough to do. You, um, uh, you seal off Antarctica with a treaty for all time, and then you militarize space. What's in, all right, what, what's in Antarctica? What, why would they have to seal off Antarctica? Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, here, I could probably... Which is it. pretty, it is closed off from my understanding. Yeah, yeah. So Antarctica, here's a little model I'm showing on the screen real quick. So this would be like a, the, the glorified snow globe version of it, right? It's a little bigger. The arc isn't as, as steep as a snow globe. But the only country or continent, I should say, that uh, doesn't look like normal, you know, all the other co continents you pr pretty much recognize, except for Antarctica. 
right? Antarctica is in this snowy continent that looks like Australia, right? That, that's very, it's actually about the same size. It's this massive continent that surrounds the outside, and it's very, very high and holds the water in. And strangely enough, Antarctica is the highest elevation continent in the world. Really strange. Nobody talks about it. It's, the average height of Antarctica is 14,000 feet, which is amazing. I mean, altitude sickness kicks in at 7,000. So Antarctica, what they did was, and again, when I was looking at this thing, part, part of what, why I got into this was, it's like, okay, if I had to hide the world from everybody, how would I do it? Well, I mean, it's, it's not something that, that, that we, first off, we had nothing to do with the building of this, obviously. The, the engineering is so far beyond us. But if I had to hide this, one of the first things I would do is I would militarize space and I would seal off Antarctica. And coincidentally enough, in the same year, in 1959, you know, the, the um, well, I'm sorry, NASA was founded in 1958. And then the Van Allen radiation belts were announced in 1959. It says, oh, yeah, nobody should ever go up there. Super, super deadly. No one should ever go. And then Kennedy screws that whole thing up. And then in the same year, 1959, they created the Antarctic Treaty. And the Antarctic Treaty, the only unbroken treaty in the history of the world, says that no corporation or country can set up shop in Antarctica uh, for private purposes ever. And, and it's not even up for renewal until 2041. And you can imagine, you know, you put a treaty like that in 1959, it's like, oh, yeah, 80 years in the future, we'll discuss it. And for me, that was the, the biggest red flag. For me, it wasn't long distance photography or gravity versus vacuum. It was that, which was, okay, you're telling every country. And, and remember, this was after World War II when there's countries rebuilding and they needed the resources, right? And Admiral Byrd had already been down there and got said, oh, yeah, the whole place is made out of well, money. what resources? I, was, I, I interrupted you. What resources oh, no, no, okay. are in Antarctica? There's a, there's a wonderful, um, uh, I think it was from the CBS. The, there was a, a show back in the day, 60 Minutes of its Day, called the Long Jeans Chronoscope. Uh, Long Jeans was a watch company back in the day. And they would bring on people. I mean, Admiral Byrd in the mid '50s was, you know, a, a big celebrity because he was an explorer. You know, they were still exploring stuff. And he goes on television. And you can find the clip. It's it's out there. Find it in two seconds. And he says the the whole place. He goes. He goes. Oh yeah. There's an entire mountain range made out of coal. And there's there's uh, oil and gas. And there's minerals. And there's uranium. And of course, he stopped himself. And he goes. I probably shouldn't told told you guys that. And it's like, oh, that's beautiful, man. <laughs> You're just doing really well. And he, he was actually worried that there'd be these massive conflicts down there fighting over the resources of Antarctica. And this was right before he went on to, he turned out to be his last mission, which was Operation Deep Freeze in 55-56. Um, Not to be confused with Operation High Jump, which is a whole other thing. And um, Operation, which was right after World War II. And Operation Deep Freeze, when he got back from that, immediately, for no apparent reason, they started building the Antarctic Treaty which it took a few years to, to ratify it. And then 1959 says, oh, yeah, we're, we're locking this place down. And that was brilliant, which was a, because it, 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 and under the guise of environmental, it's the only piece of real estate, by the way, in the world that's not owned by anyone. And, and the permit process to go through, if you want to do independent uh, uh, exploration down there, the permit process is ridiculously huge. You have to get multiple countries' permission. Uh, the fees are non-refundable ranging from low six figures to, I'm sorry, high six figures to, to low seven figures, depending on what you're going to do. And it, it just screams, go away. But so nobody goes down there. And yes, by the way, yes, you could spend $15,000 and, and go down there and have pictures taken on the coastline with penguins. That's about as far as you're going to go. What would happen if, if somebody were to go there and go past the coast with the penguins and climb out to the edge? Eventually, you're saying that there's an edge around the outside right. so what if they climbed out to that edge what would they find well first off you're not going to you're not going to be able to do it um uh the edge would be so the, the white area on this from the from the coastline to the to the edge of the white area is several thousand miles at least in fact the the white area that we put on our things is probably less than what it is uh in in reality because it's it's going to be thicker and the reason why i say that is because admiral bird the youngest admiral in the United States Navy and their top research guy, he was flying down there for 30 years. You know, he was the first guy to uh, fly to the North Pole, and I think it was 1926. And in 1927, for whatever reason, they sent him out to Antarctica, and he flew around there for 30 years. 
before they before they finally f- freaked out. And I think what happened was, I think somebody had the old maps, you know, the the ancient maps, and and probably said, oh, it's like you know, didn't believe it. It's like ah, it can't actually be that, right? And then for thirty years, Admiral Byrd's looking for it, you know, through the United States Navy, and then he finds it, right? He finds some indication that's like, oh wow, there could be a barrier out there. And then they pull everything back. And it's like, okay, well, let's, let's, so the average person, no. And again, the only people that are down there are military and military scientists. So, and, and they know where you are. And, and nowadays, you, there's no way you could, even if you wanted to. I mean, yeah, you could have your buddy, uh, you know, a super rich billionaire, which did find out anyway. You'd never be able to do it in secret. You'd have to bypass GPS because GPS is the United States military. And just what, head off into the snow? Right. And, well, okay. And, so then, all right. So if we right. can't get there, what does your theory say is there? What do you mean on the outer marker? Yeah. Once you, yeah. Oh, what's, well, what's, let's just what's beyond I mean, that? If, if there is an edge, then eventually you'd run into some sort of barrier that, I mean, dealer's choice on exactly what the barrier is made of. You know, is it a heavy That's element? That's the dome. Is that yeah, the, the dome? Yeah, the dome. Right. Exactly. The, the thing that creates the air pressure that we're in now. I mean, it, you know, electromagnetic, force field, uh, heavy water, okay, so heavy So for element. your theory to work, th- yeah. there is something there holding everything in. Yes. And this is what we call the dome. And, right. and not everybody in our community even believes that. It's, only, it's like a 70-30 split. But that's because there's a, a percentage of people in our community that they just don't like the whole idea of being enclosed. It's like, yeah, if you don't do that, though, you're going to have to deal with the whole vacuum thing, unless you say there's no vacuum out there. But most of us believe in in a dome. Because we can't get there to the edge. Right. You can't prove it. It can't be disproven, but it can't be proven. So that's just kind of, you have to take that on faith. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. How are they, they able to keep this, all these details, a secret? Because you've got not just the U.S. government uh, going up into space for the last 75 years or so. Yeah. You've got other world governments going up into space. You've got Elon Musk and uh, the, the bald guy where I buy my go shopping online mm. going up into space. Right. Captain Kirk, William Shatner's been up there. How are these, are they lying? Are, when they go up there, surely they see the curvature. They know that they're going up. So how how is how are they keeping it a secret? Got it, got it. Um, one of the common misconceptions is that it's too big to keep a secret, meaning too many people would know. And uh, would this try to get this is my up. belief. That's that's what I think. sure. It's, yeah, it, it has to be too big, right? Um, in this case, this isn't like the Manhattan Project, which in the movie was fine, but this isn't like the Manhattan Manhattan Project, where hundreds of thousands of people working in different parts of the country in the United States. Uh, you know, refined uranium and built the materials to uh, to develop atomic weapons. This isn't like that. This is so big that, and so well hidden naturally, because we had nothing to do with it, that you hardly have to have anyone involved at all, at only at the highest levels. Meaning, um, for example, do I think that 95, you know, 95% of NASA wouldn't have to know? Uh, you know, the, the, the people that, that build the electronics and the people that build the fuel systems and build all the all the things, they don't have to know anything. It's only the telemetry guys and the people at the high end, you know, the Werner von Braun types that would have to know. The so people, what about the, other- the guys that just go up and and see or claim to see the curvature of the earth when they, you know, the, the regular right. okay, I'll, civilians I'll get- that get to go up now? Well, pff, no. The, well, uh, J- the- uh, uh, uh James T. Kirk, uh, William yeah, Shatner, William Shatner has right. been up there. The, the the rich guy that that owns the airplane company. A lot of people have been up. Virgin, uh, but but the when they guy. go up, the, it's a very very limited. They're going up what uh, maybe maybe a hundred miles, maybe. And the you know the model that I have over there, the dome would be sitting at at least a couple thousand miles. High. Oh, okay, now, what as, about as far as? I'm sorry, go ahead. The the astronauts then that are that are up there in the space station. How okay. is the space station hanging up there? Oh boy! All right, uh, all right. Let's get the, the the obvious ones out of the way. Uh, in order for this to work, you have to basically condemn everything that is NASA and the Apollo program to be sure. Uh, the Apollo and so everybody in our community. One of the, the so living- we didn't go to the moon. God no. 
Nobody's okay. nobody's been to the moon. It, it Let me scratch been, that question off the list. It is it is it is the uh, it is. Uh, let, me, uh, let me be clear. It was a wonderful idea to pull off in the 1960s. You remember, after World War II, the only country that wasn't smoldering was us. And so, to put an exclamation point on America, you know, ex- you know, that was a brilliant move. Which is, it's like, you know what, we're going to do something, you know, we, we aren't the greatest empire in the world. You know, the, I still think the Romans are far and away, you know, the greatest empire that ever was, the most influential. But we're the greatest show that, that, that ever was. We, we, America, oh my God, we are showmanship all day long. We're the Michael Jordan of empires, right? Compared to like Will Chamberlain, who basically dominated everything. When the 60s came along and somebody decided, you know what? Let's, let's make a, you know, make a space program and say we're going to go to the moon, right? And go. It was, a, it was a good move because there was no way anyone could disprove it, which was only the Americans went. We went, what, six times in, th- in less than four years. There were no problems except for Apollo 13. I don't even want to get into that. And then in 1972, they just shut the whole thing down. It's like, well, people have seemed to lost interest. Good night, everybody. Roll credits. And nobody, not only did nobody ever go back, right, That's, which blows me, including the Americans, but nobody even tried. The other space agencies, Japan, China, Russia, Europe, and uh, India, never even tried. And you can say, oh, no, no, they landed probes. Like, well, not people, they didn't. In fact, no one, every, every couple of years, in fact, I did a montage video on this recently, where I said, every president since basically Carter has said that we're going back. Committee, you know, I, I, I run the clips. It's like, oh, yeah, every president's like, we're going back, we're going back. And everybody says that. And it's like, but they never do. They just keep kicking the t- can down the road and the road, you know, again and again and again. And so, okay, sorry. so back to so back to the the curvature, the, right, the astronauts the curvature. that are up there, right? How do what are they seeing? The astronauts. Well, first off, all the astronauts are lying through the freaking teeth because they're soldiers. I, I was put to. I, I had a chance to talk to um, Terry Virts. One of our one of our astronauts and one of the, the the commentators was saying, you know, are you calling you calling Terry Vert's a liar? I go, no, he's not a lawyer. He's a he's a soldier. He's a full bird colonel in the United States military. These guys aren't cadets. These are all ranking officers. There was a lieutenant general. I think was one of the highest. You don't get to be a full bird colonel unless you know how to follow orders and keep your mouth shut when they tell you to. It's completely different. They have they're under different rules than us. With us, there's civil suits. With them, it's treason. And treason, as you know, that's not something you want to be tied to, right? You know, it's you know they lock you in a room and throw away the room. So okay, all the so astronauts- they're lying. The, yes, the, uh, I can accept that one. What about the uh, the commercial astronauts, the SpaceX astronauts that just went up? Yep, all all those guys. Every one of them. They they're not to, military. Uh, no, well, they don't have to be military, but at the same time, they're not going to the moon, and most of them aren't going to the space station. But it doesn't really matter. They still have to sign the, the waivers that say you, you know, only get to say, well, I'll give you a great example. Great example. Um, one of the, the most heavily viewed space things was the uh, Red Bull jump. Great one, right? When Red that, Bull that was you know, on my list. World, world yeah. record, right? And the guy swears up and down. It's like, oh, I saw the curvature, blah, 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 of course. And I actually remember um, there was a producer I talked to. And because, and, you know, they, they show the thumbnail. And it's this severe curvature. Right, and it's like there's the, with what it, you can see the landmass down below. It's like okay, so the Earth is only about a hundred miles wide, right? And I and I've talked to different people. I said, why do you keep running that picture of the severe curvature? You know full well it's not curved at that height. And they say, yeah, but it's a good image. You know the the Mark Twain line, and let me get into the Neil Tyson real quick. But the Mark Twain line applies all the time, which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story. I agree most of the time, but Neil Tyson came out on stage, and he was actually, thank God for him sometimes, he came out on stage in front of this university, and he was criticizing the Red Bull jump. He was going, he's going, um, you know, the whole curvature of the earth, he goes, at that height, you don't see the curvature, right? He, he's basically saying, you don't see the curvature up until, like, you know, you get into three figures, over 100 miles. And he goes, so he was basically saying that the Red Bull was was just doing it for clicks and for hype, and there, there was no well, curvature. So that they're, are you saying that they faked the curvature, or they were just using a GoPro with a they really wide lens? They were using a GoPro lens, and, lens. Just, and they told the Felix Bumgardner, the, the guy that jumped, it's like, you say you, that you saw the curvature of the Earth. <laughs> Add in, I mean, it's not just them. There's also people that want to see the curvature. Wow. Sorry. Some people, the, it's the five lights, four, four lights thing. The, uh, oh, crap. What's the thing where you, you want to see something? 
uh, Fahrenheit, not Fahrenheit 451, uh, I think it was 1984, where, because I've had people say, many people, I mean, over a thousand people have told me, it's like, oh no, I see the curvature from the, from the airplane. I go, really? I go, take a, take a picture of it with your, your camera. I go, put it on a laptop when you get home. Tell me that curvature is still there. And if it is, send it to me. I want to see it. Nobody sends anything because okay. it's so because you've they, got to be a certain height to be able to actually see it, which very right. few people are are ever able to do. Right. And you're saying that those people that actually have gotten up to that height are just either either they're lying following scared, orders or lying or lying or or they they're told it's like hey you see the curve it's like yeah yeah I see the curvature they don't I mean hell I've had people say they've seen it from mountaintops from balloons. Uh, and again, swear. I mean, they'd probably pass a lie detector test. It's like, yeah, sure, fine. Tell me where it is. I mean, we, we've we been filming this stuff now for, for nine plus years. Curvature's not there. I'm sure someone's going to leave a comment and say that they've seen I'm it. Sure, well, they've seen and it to that so. point, I will send you a link right after. You can send it to them. There's a wonderful, we call it the Black Swan, which is, uh, there was a guy that, one of our guys that went down to the beach off of uh, Santa Barbara, California. And he shot two oil rigs off in the distance, right? One at six miles, one at 10 miles, perfectly calm, calm day. And it was live video, wasn't Photoshop. And he's spinning around. He wanted to, you know, it's like, oh, here's, here it is on Google Maps, blah, blah, blah. That wasn't the interesting part. It's like six miles and 10 miles, right? And especially 10 miles, you're going to have at least 800, you know, inches of curvature. Part of that rig's going to be blocked. And he had one right in front of the other, right? Not only were both those rigs not blocked, but there was a horizon line way in the distance. So the question is, why was there a horizon line there? Because of course, you know, if you believe in the curvature of the Earth, the horizon, the artificial horizon is going to be in front of them. It's going to cut off both those oil rigs. You can't resolve both of them. I mean, to the, and the the heavy science guys were were so ticked by it. They were, you know, why had one guy come at me and say, no, 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 the horizon wasn't in front of the rigs or behind the rigs. The real horizon's invisible, and you're just that's complete illusion. What you're seeing there, it's like. Okay, well, you can tell me that, but the general public's not going to buy it because I got the video. What do you got? You can't just say, oh, it's the hori- the real horizon's invisible. Okay, where is it? He couldn't say. All right, so we've got, uh, in flat earth theory, gravity is not a thing. Right. Right? Uh, okay. So we know that we've got satellites up there. I use Starlink, or I will be soon. Television satellites. Right. Uh, space station that we mentioned earlier. Right. So are they not there, or if they are actually there, how are they staying up there, or do they are they just not there? They are there, uh, and I've seen it myself uh, back in the day before I when I lived in Colorado for twenty years. I was into somebody got me into night vision binoculars, and so I was watching the sky all the time. And there are a way more satellites up there than than you think, and there's a lot of stuff there that isn't us. But that's a whole another topic for another time. Um. However, most people don't know this, and you can look it up. This is not confidential secret information. The biggest consumer of helium in the world is NASA. And they launch whatever you want to call it, observational balloons, weather balloons, communication balloons, satellites, on satellites, all the time, every day, all the time. And because they can do it pennies on the dollar. They don't have to. All, most of the satellites you're, you're, people talk about, they're suspended. It's not like the weather balloons where it goes up to a certain altitude, you know, because weather balloons, you know, get, you know, taut and then explode and then the whole thing falls and you, you collect what They can keep these balloons up there for a long time. And so that's what they do for pennies on the dollar. And so, so yes, I, but, but also to your point, satellites only do so much. Uh, and we've got some wonderful things I could I could also send you, which is 90-something percent of communications are still a combination of the old school undersea cables, which were converted to fiber optics, you know, years ago, which we ran years ago between everything, um, and cell towers. Uh, once and what about c- Starlink? What about Elon st- Musk's oh, Starlink? Oh, boy. I could spend... So I we don't have the time, but I could spend so much time on, on Starlink. Starlink... Are they real? Is Starlink... Are those satellites I, I really there? I don't know what Starlink is exactly, but what I have talked to way too many people that say that Starlink is is at very least a bad product and and compensates more with cell towers than anything else, and and whatever's up there flying in those lines, I, I don't know. 
I don't know what it is. But but e- given Elon's track record, uh, let, let's put it this way: from our standpoint, and I know some people, even in in, in my community, you know, they say, "Oh, you know, Elon's a hero. He could be the guy. He tells the truth and and you know tries to call out the new world order." It's like, yeah, but he's the front man for a fake space company. So fake that, because fake you because say it's it's, fake. Yeah, because space is fake. So he, he he's the he Well, so now you are assuming, making an assumption, just like yeah. the gravity guys were making an assumption that gravity exists, you're just assuming space is fake, so SpaceX can't No, exist. no, 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 no. No, I'm assuming space is fake because the spacesuit can't work. Uh, which we hadn't really gotten into. Uh, real quick, the the pressure thing, the whole gravity versus the the vacuum of space. Pressure needs a container. That's why when you go down to the to the store to pick up a thing of propane, you can't just order a bag of propane or even a plastic thing of propane. Propane is it's metal containers, right? Any soft container in a vacuum expands until it explodes. You can do this on the ground all day long in little vacuum chambers. Same reason a, a balloon, helium balloon, like you're talking about earlier, goes up high enough, <clears throat> less air pressure. Air right, pressure. right, right. And then it would expand Different, and, and balloon. Yeah, diff, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It gets, expla- yeah, it's, expand and explode. Yep. There's only one object ever in the history of anything, any soft object, that doesn't doesn't conform to this rule. That's the spacesuit. It's absolutely— Okay, so I have I have read that uh, in, the, in my Flat Earthery research. Yeah. And that's one of the ones that, to me, does make sense, right? Because I know that it's— if it's pressurized inside and there's no pressure outside, it's going to expand, and the spacesuits never seem to expand. So hopefully, the uh, we'll get some comments on oh, please, why that is or do. is not true. And it was a brilliant move. I, oh my god! We all you have to do is do a little research on the early spacesuits because they knew this, right? Which was remember, I I think real engineers actually tried to figure out the problems, and the early spacesuits looked like B movies, which were plastic and metal, and they were horribly bulky, and and they were and they were heavy, and it's like we're you can't get, ask a guy to climb a ladder with this thing; it's horrible, right? And then somebody, oh, whoever thought of it, good to you, whoever whoever you are. Um, said, you know what, let's just make it a soft suit. Dude, we can't do that. A soft suit is just expanded, turn into a parade float. You tip over and die. It's like, no, nobody knows physics. Hell, I mean, how many, I mean, the math club and the physics club, really, really small. Band, football, really, really big. Everything else, really, really small. They'll, they'll accept it. They'll absolutely accept it. And so all of a sudden you've got guys on the moon, knees and arms are working great. You know full well, that if you expand it, you pump air into that suit, it, it takes the form of the suit, right? And it becomes absolutely rigid. That's why G-force suits, which aren't space suits, um, are hooked up to a tube and they're meant to keep you rigid in the cockpit, right? So you don't move and they constrict you. Um, it is, it is. in fact, r- real quick, when I ask people uh, from other countries, I say, okay, I know why the Americans say we went to the moon. It's a national pride thing, you know, rah, rah, wave the flag, you know, a tear comes down your face. But when you're in another country, it's like, hey, you people from Sweden, Right? Why do you think the Americans went to the moon? And you'd be amazed at the answer they give me. They only give me one answer, which is, well, it was on television. And your, your media would never lie about something like that. <laughs> like, oh, you guys, do you well, even... I know a lot of people now do know that the media yeah, would it's like, lie. Do you know us? If, if, if America, look, and I'm not bashing on America, God bless us, but if you know full well that if there was a lie we could get away with to make us look better... We'll do it without hesitation. We will absolutely, we, we love the propaganda machine and we love making us look better. And us being on the moon, put, planting that flag, doesn't matter if it was it's real. It's a big win. It's a big it's win. It's a big, huge win. Huge. Especially back in the uh, Cold War days. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Okay, by so, the way, sorry, sorry, real quick. Why did Russia quit? You remember, you're, you're old enough to remember, the, the space race was a thing. You can look it up, space race, magazine covers, astronaut and cosmonaut. People don't even remember that cosmonaut was a word, right? It's like, you know, Russia and America racing to the moon. America gets there and then Russia just quits? They just well, why wouldn't Russia say to make America look bad, they faked it? You faked it. You had to fake it because X, Y, Z. Well, because unfortunately, mutually assured destruction doesn't just apply to weapons, it also applies to information, and which also meant the Russians knew and were faking some of their stuff too. And so that it was like- What, no evidence? They, what what, what benefit evidence would that? it do? The what? 
Do we have evidence of that, or this is just the, the, they theory. were faking it? Well, no, that just goes into the, it's like if one space program is fake, then they're all then they're all fake. So you make um, the assumption that they're all fake. Yeah, I mean the rocket programs are real, right? But then again, you could that that's not much of a jump to say that the rocket programs were just expanding their ballistic missile capabilities, in you know the the research and how far you could take that. But it doesn't benefit Russia to try to call America out. It doesn't. And you, even if you could, one, they're not going to believe you because you're because you. I'm sorry, the USSR back in the day, and and then every other program. And it's a great way to fund, you know, send money. I mean, um, what's NASA's budget right now? 60, 60 something billion a year. That's a lot of money you can sink in other things. You know, yo, you spend some of it on rockets, but as you know, you know, divert some of those funds. There's a lot of programs you can you can use. And old tricks are the best tricks. So getting back to uh, Starlink. So the Starlink astronauts are not telling us everything. Right. Um, because, well, we have no evidence of that. But this, of this is part of your theory because they have to be. Right. Uh, does that mean that uh, Musk isn't going to be going to Mars? If, if uh, <laughs> SpaceX lands on Mars in 2030, you're saying that that obviously has to also be faked? I'm trying not to crush the microphone. Okay, so <laughs> Musk is sorry. Musk is one of my pet projects, and it and it drives he drives me insane because they have elevated him to Tony Stark status, and I there is no justification for it at all. Uh, the fact that he can tweet a single period and it gets retweeted fifty thousand times as the, one of the deepest, most thought provoking things ever. However, when he starts talking, and look, I've heard this, you know, we'll back up even before Mars, look up the Dear Moon Project. That's a favorite of mine. Dear Moon Project. That's what put Elon on my radar for the first time back in 20, 2017, where he says, oh yeah, I'm going to put a bunch of content makers from the, from the social media world. I'm going to put them in a space bus, which reminds me a lot of the space shuttle program, which a lot of people don't know we don't even have anymore. Weird. And I'm going to slingshot them around the moon. We're going to be kind of like a tour. They're going to paint and they're going to photograph stuff. And we're going to send them around the moon in 2018. And I remember when the first time I, I saw that, it's like, that is the most aggressive space timeline I've ever heard in my life. You, you don't even have a rocket. You don't have a, a, a crew. These guys were just passengers. You don't have a capsule. What are you, what are you doing? Never happened. Never even started. Of course, you know, everything Everything else, people, again, you know, the underground bullet train in California never happened. Super plane that was going to go from the United States to China, you know, that never happened. I'm going to save those kids and with my super submarine. It just goes on and on and on. So when he said that, oh, yeah, I'm, we're going to start doing an unmanned thing. We're going to have people on Mars by 2030. Even if you believed that you could get to Mars, which we don't because the Mars is just a light on a ceiling, you still haven't solved the fuel problem, which has always been the problem forever, which is it's a one-way trip, which is, even if you could get there, because Mars, if you believe, you know, mainstream science, Mars is way, 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 way farther than the moon, right? Way, incredibly far. Once you got there, how are you getting back? It's, it isn't like the moon with null gravity where you could just pretend that you just fired it off from, you know, you know, from the moon's surface and let gravity take you back in. Oh, no, no, no. You're not getting back. So, no. No, nobody's, nobody's going to. It is just another space story. It's something that you put out there and people just eat up and they, they don't. So, you're saying that either he's, it, they won't be able to complete it can't. or if they, if they do and you see it on TV, it's not real. Oh, well, they wouldn't. There's there's certain things now where it's it's sort of the same reason why the nobody's even tried to go back to the moon since 1972, which is the the, the ability for the common people to microscope an event is so hyper focused that it, it was a, a joke I've told over the years, which is if somebody backed a dump truck, you know, if the CIA came to me and said, oh, here's a dump truck full of money. Can you help us fake the next moon mission? You know, a man moon mission. I go, get the truck out of here. I don't want anything to do with it because you can't fake it nowadays. The, 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 the general population is too, too good. I mean, come on. Even just mainstream media, you know, movie, um, like moviemistakes.com and all the things. If a coffee cup moves in a movie from here to there and the character doesn't do it, someone's going to find it. That's all you need. So faking the moon mission now would be so problematic, they'd be scared to death. It's why, it's why we didn't have a second blue marble shot for 43 years. 
by the way, which, you know, the first blue marble shot was in 1972, Apollo 17 on the way back. Famous blue marble shot. You'd recognize it if you pulled it up in two seconds. The second one wasn't taken until 2015, which coincidentally was when we fired up. It's like, why? 43 years? That's forever in, in, the, in the tech world. And it, so it never your prediction happened. is Musk is going to give up like I, some of the other projects. It's just not yeah, going to happen. No, no different than Dear Moon. I mean, Dear Moon took seven years before they finally canceled it. They canceled it this year and it was just so quiet. The contract ran out. And then all those social media guys that you got really, really hyped up in 2017, I'm going to go to the moon, never did anything. Uh, so yeah, no, it's it's, it's just going to fade away, like everything else they've done. I mean, come on, I've uh, got clips where Reagan's like, oh yeah, we're going to go in five years. Reagan? That was a while back. A minute ago, you said that Mars wasn't there, or it was just a, a light on the Light in the sky. Ceiling. Yep. Light in the sky. Yep. So does that mean, so there's no outer space? I think you kind of alluded to that earlier. Yeah, it is, it is no different than... And I don't know, I mean, you look like the type of guy who'd probably been to a planetarium once or twice, um, but your average person doesn't because it's just a lost thing. Planetariums, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a building like a, like a mini coliseum, and you sit on your back, and they turn off the lights, and they project the, the, the moon and the stars and the ceiling, you know, and all the constellations. And I've told people, I go, okay, you go to one of those planetariums, and look, there's Jupiter, right? Hey, get a pair of binoculars out. Can you see the moons of Jupiter? Yeah, I can. Can you land on it? No, why not? Well, because it's just light on the ceiling. And I say, when you walk outside, who's to say that you're just not in a much, much bigger planetarium? That's so no very, evidence I mean, of that. Very, you you can't give me evidence of that, but that's just, that's your theory. It's yes. A, a yes, theory. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So if there is no outer space, right. Mr. Know-it-all, <laughs> where do the UFOs come from? Okay. Or is that First, a whole other video? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'll, I'll give you the, the short version, which is because remember, I was a UFO guy, huge UFO oh, guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, big, big. Oh, no. I, when I was in Colorado, um, when, I was, when I said I was looking up in the sky with night vision, it wasn't to watch satellites. It was to watch everything else that was flying around there, which can, one of those, those dumb things you don't think about, which is most of the UFOs that are flying up there, you don't see. Why? Because they work fine when they turn their headlights off, just like cars. If they don't want to be seen, they just turn their head, their lights off. And, and it's, it was a Spielberg joke at one point in, in Close Encounters, but I, I don't want to get into that, which is, so do I think there's things flying around there that aren't us? Yes, absolutely, 100%, all day long. Um, my favorite UFO sighting, you guys can look it up on Wiki, um, uh, is the 1561 Nuremberg event. <sighs> absolutely blows my mind that, that most people don't know that. Uh, where two flying aircraft carriers went over Nuremberg, Germany on a cloudless day and just hammered each other for an hour. But there was no reference point because it was 1561. So people thought they was at a religious event. And uh, they, they sketched the whole thing because it was pre-photography. So it was brilliant. I believe there are things that are flying around there, but I have now had to adjust that to be like, okay, well, I mean, I didn't think they were from Mars or Venus anyway, right? But they're not from bodies that are further away they're really either much much closer or they're with us meaning they're either in other versions of this that could be outside or they're stuck in here with us perhaps subterranean maybe perhaps they're living under, on antarctica uh, antarctica underwater i mean there's a again antarctica there's a wonderful um side thing of ours where uh look up admiral bird same guy that went down right after world war ii right after the surrender papers were signed in um in tokyo they sent him with a full-blown carrier group down to Antarctica. Well, that's kind of odd. With 5,000 infantry, what are you doing down there? And, and he's, the, the rumor was is that, I, I go along with it because Indiana Jones for me wasn't just a movie. You know, the Germans didn't care how they were going to win. So they were looking for any, any, if there was a magical artifact or there was a rumor, they went for it. It's like, oh, hell, can we use this? Is, is that Frodo's ring? Yeah, let's go for that. Harry Potter's wand, let's go for that. So they were the only people that were down there in World War II. Everybody else had left the ice in, uh, in World War II for explorations, except for the Germans. And so the rumor was that, that in um, uh, 1946, I believe, uh, right, after, right after the surrender papers, they, uh, they went down there to root out the last of the Nazi bases, and they ran into another civilization while they were down there. So why not? I, I, I don't hate that story. So the Mars isn't there. What about the moon? Is, is the moon there? And if it is there, is it flat also? No, it's, and there, that is a point of debate in our community because we can't even prove it's, it's three-dimensional. 
you know, that's actually three dimensional. It looks three dimensional, of course. Um, at the very least, it's way, way smaller than uh, than what we, than what they say. It's not two thousand miles wide. It's it's tiny by comparison. It's probably less than a hundred miles wide, maybe even seventy or fifty. Uh, and funny enough, and it, it's a nightlight, and it's self illuminated, like the sun. So the sun would be a, basically a, a giant light bulb and the the moon would be a giant night light and the moon doesn't get its reflective qualities from the sun it's it's self-illuminated okay so then when i see a lunar eclipse right. which i can see for myself when it right. happens yep what is that and why is that shadow that i'm seeing a curved shadow being cast supposedly from from the sun the Earth is the uh, creating the shadow right, right, right. on the Moon, and it's curved. Why is that? No, no different than how we do it in a in a planetarium. We can do waxing and waning crescents in a planetarium all day long, and all we're doing is we're shading the Moon itself. And I know it's going to be tough for for some of your listeners, but you could do the same thing with the Sun. It's the only thing we don't put in a planetarium yet because we we don't have the the light source behind you know the energy behind the pixel to pull that off. Uh, but but it was some somebody messaged me back in 2017. Uh, he he passed away now, uh, but he was there for the for the eclipse. I was there for the eclipse too, but he was in a different part of the country. And he messaged me almost immediately. He goes, Mark, he goes, there's nothing eclipsing the sun for the solar eclipse. And I go, I don't get it. He goes, no, there's nothing there's nothing going in front of it. It's he goes, it's like the the, the sun is eclipsing itself. You know, like it's shading itself. And it, it dawned on me. It's like, oh yeah. Like you would do for the moon in a planetarium. We just never, we just don't think of it. It was like, why wouldn't you use the same technique for the sun? So, um, I don't remember what the original question was. Uh, well, explaining no. how an eclipse oh, works, right, right, a lunar right. eclipse, yeah, eclipse or solar eclipse. Everything in the sky is just lights on a ceiling. The, the sky, for, for me anyway, uh, is a giant, heavily ornamented or ornamental uh, clock that predates language. That's all it is. Uh, you know, signs and wonders. I'm a religious guy. So who built all this stuff? Who, who is this from God? Is this from some other civilization? Is it what, why you, you is can, all this there? Yeah, you can only go down two paths with that, which is, uh, we'll go down the, the, you go down to the contact path, you know, Jodie Foster movie, uh, where it's an older civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves with engineering techniques that are way beyond us right now. Uh, or it's the divine, but really, and I, I, again, I'm not trying to step on, on religious toes here. Um, at that point, you're splitting hairs, aren't you? Because one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. Uh, it, what would be the difference? If a giant golden spaceship lands in the middle of France right now, you're going to have two groups of people. You're going to have the nerds that are going to come out there and say, oh, wow, they do look like Avatar. And you're going to have the other people that be like, we must worship the blue beans, start building churches immediately. And that's how humanity works. So I could go either way. At the very least, though, whoever built this is closer, one step closer to having God's phone number than we are. So, but your th so your theory doesn't address that part as, as to where it, where it all came from. That's not part of flat Earth theory. Um, most of the time it's not because, I mean, who, who built the world? Uh, I, I address it only, I, I'm cautious when I address it because again, five religions and there's a lot of people with, with different religious beliefs. Um, do I believe that, that God built this? Yes, I do. It, it, it's, there's a lot of very clever designs, you know, design parts of it that when, you know, when I was looking at this. And staring at it, it's like, how would I do this? You know, if I, you know, could one of my qualifications of like conspiracies is, and I consider myself a fairly clever problem solver, if given enough time, which is, uh, could I improve on it or would I do anything different? And a lot of these, when I'm looking at the design of this place, it's like, wow, this place is really well done, um, especially the Antarctic part where it's this negative reinforcement on the outer edge, which is why most people don't, don't run into it. I mean, think about if you know any ship captains, you know, one of the scariest words ever is icebergs, right? When you, if you see icebergs, you want to turn around. And if you get to the coastline and you see, oh, there's just walls of ice and snow, and then it just goes up in elevation for forever, uh, you just want to go away and you turn around on your own. You don't have to have, you know, frost giants in front of a gate on the outside, you know, because you a big sign, go away. It just, it, get, it's, it's, it allows people to 
um, make the decisions what they consider on their own, but you're kind of the, whoever built this place is nudging them behind the scenes. L let me give you one example really quick here. Um, human beings are very unique in that, so like uh, you could take a thousand acre wildlife preserve, put any animal in it that you want, right? And they won't care. Right, it's like buffalo, right? It's like buffalo in a wildlife preserve. You can have grass and water. It's like, oh. and there's a fence, right? Eventually, they'll get to the fence. And the buffalo won't care. They'll just turn around because they've got plenty of room to do whatever. You put 20 people in that same preserve. You know all they're going to care about? They don't care about the grass and water. They care about the fence. They're going to stare at the fence. It's like, why is the fence there? Who's on the other side? Do, who made the fence? Did we anger the fence gods? Maybe we should sacrifice something to the fence. Hey, get some of those buffalo, right? That's all they would care about. So how do you solve that? You remove the fence. You tell people there is no fence. It's the in fact there never has been a fence. It's just this globe. You're an ant on an apple. You can go round and round and round all day long. You're never going to find the fence. And then when the powers that be, the government or whoever, you know, the secret secret people, find it, why would you tell the public? You know, information is power. You don't tell. In fact, I tell people. It's like, look, I, I, yes, I'm, I'm doing this stuff on social media now, but would I have told people in 1960? Hell no, I wouldn't have told them. I mean, you saw what happened with Roswell in 1947 in the newspapers and the radios freaking out. People didn't know what to do. Of course, the government was going to roll that one back. Are you planning to build your own rocket ship and uh, crash it into the ground while everybody watches? Oh, you mean like Mad Mike? Just like Mad Mike, he got a Mad, lot of attention. Yeah, Mad Mike Hughes, what, okay. What the, was the, that about? Uh, Mad Mike, okay. Mad Mike, I, I'm not, I don't want to talk ill of him, uh, but he was an aging stuntman who always wanted to be like Evil Knievel. He just came along too late. In fact, Evil Knievel inspired Mad Mike. And to the point where he really was stuck on the whole Snake River, Evil Knievel jump, and he built his own steam-powered rockets, which were never going to go up very high. But he had a hard time getting funding for stuff. And so he came to us and asked for um, funding. And we said, okay, we'll help you finish your rocket. And it didn't cost wait, that wait, much. You said he came to us. Do you have an organization or oh, who God, did yeah. he come to? Well, yeah, no, he, oh. I mean, it's not... It's 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 not like we have a council or anything. It's really really loose, which works out because it you know when if anything, if any cell gets knocked out, you know other others pick up the slack, uh, in in whatever communities. He went to I think it was one of our um, New Mexico groups because he was he was out of um, Southern California, and he said you know help me finish the rocket. The rocket was not high tech, right? <laughs> it's very very rudimentary. I mean it was a '70s style rocket, steam powered. And uh, he, in, we said, yeah, sure, we'd be happy to. Um, but in exchange, like anything, you know, here, put a giant flat earth sticker on the side of your rocket. And uh, go figure, you know, the media that more or less ignored him up to that point, stuntman, eh, fine, dime a dozen. Stuntman, flat earth rocket guy? Oh, that's gold. I mean, he got on television shows. Uh, he signed. He signed a uh, six-year contract uh, for was it was it the Sci-Fi Network? Science Science Network. Ironically enough, because they wanted to, you know, do sort of a oh, here's this crazy guy alternative thinking thing, and they helped him build his newer rockets. And unfortunately, in season one, episode one, which of course never aired, uh, the uh, the parachute. If you guys don't know what those rockets do, they they go up to a certain height, and then a chute comes out of the back, and then it floats nose down until he gets to the point. the The chute fell off. Immediate. I mean. From the pad, <laughs> it's like fell off like a hundred feet up, and then land. It's like, and, and he didn't know it, of course. Thank God. And uh, so I, I'm sure his last moments, brief, were were not as terrifying as if he saw the, the thing go off immediately. But everybody else is like, oh no, right? And and so yeah, Man, he, this he, isn't going to end well. It's not going to end well. And I, ironically enough, he was supposed to be in the um, the Netflix documentary, the Behind the Curve. And the producers, for that very reason, uh, said that we couldn't because we we couldn't bring him in in case something went wrong. And they were right to do so because uh, shortly after that movie aired and and did stuff, he wasn't part of it. And then it crashed. And in fact, even the media didn't cover it that much, which was interesting. You know, they 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 covered it all the way up to that point, but when it crashed, it it didn't get a lot of didn't get a lot of traction. But he wasn't. 
he wasn't a diehard. I mean, he couldn't rattle off a lot of the stuff that, that I'm rattling off here. He just was, he was in it for, when he went on Tosh 2.0, it, you know, Tosh called him out. He goes, you're in it for the chicks, aren't you? And the money. And, and it's like, yeah, you know, he was. Of course. Yeah, he was. Of course. I get it. Always wanting to impress the chicks. Yeah. Stuntmen are like that. Now, you're a YouTuber, and yep. I'm guessing that you, like me, gets a lot of hate comments, uh, as well as the experts that are taking time off of their break at Arby's to explain why you're wrong. Right. So how do you deal with the experts and the trolls and the morons uh, in the comments? Most of the time, well, okay, most of the time I don't, I don't read a lot of the comments because I've seen them. You know, we, you read them in the beginning, but years later, it's like, uh, I, I've seen it. You know, you, you, I kind of treat them like robots or NPCs, which I believe in anyway. Uh, but most of the time I can't really get on them because I know people in our community that started off as trolls. I mean, David Weiss, one, one of my favorite guys in, in Flat Earth, he, he does a lot of the heavy lifting with his interviews and, and uh, presentations. He used to ban people, right, from his, from his chat rooms. And it's like lifetime ban. If they even brought up Flat Earth, it's like, hey, have you looked into Flat Earth? Ban for life. Ban for life. That was his favorite thing. Oh, yeah. Ban hammer. Just ban cr- hammer. Ban hammer. Just ban. I have crushed a big people one. all day long. And then eventually, uh, there's something, I think it's called eighth man syndrome, which is if you hear something, a topic, even if you don't want to hear it from enough people, random people, unsolicited, eventually, kind of like a movie. It's like, hey, did you watch such, such, eventually be like, maybe I should see it. You know, are all these random people, you know, can they be wrong? And so one of his good friends uh, uh, reached out to him, you know, in private. And it's like, hey, have you looked into this? Right? He's like, not you too. And then he, he looked into it and now he is singing, you know, beating the drum louder than pretty much anyone. And so for me, I try to remind people, I was like, look, everybody starts and nobody likes flat earth to begin with, which is a testament to, you know, to the topic on its own. Everybody hates it. Everybody hates it to start. Why wouldn't you? It's the only thing you learn when you're a kid, which is, hey, we're going to put, you know, we don't debunk any other conspiracy, right? When you're in first grade, except that one, which is, it's like, oh yeah, you know, we used to think the kids, they used to think the world was flat, but now we know it's a globe. And then they just put it in the corner of the classroom and they leave it there for your entire school year. And, you know, if you're bored, you spin it and stuff. And so I just remind them, I go, look, we, I used to be you, or, or not necessarily you, but I used to be, uh, you know, these, uh, these other people. And so if you come at me, I- So you I, don't I, delete comments? No, no, I, okay. I don't. I, and don't. I delete them every day. I'm a believer. I'm not going to delete comments on this video though. So. No, don't. I mean, no, I metrics won't. are metrics. And that is people don't get it, which is one of the reasons why just about every huge channel on YouTube has done a flat earth video at one point. I mean, big, big channels is because they've heard the rumor that not only do you get a boost in hits and likes and stuff, um, but the comment section just turns into a Donnybrook. The comment section is like, you know, all it takes is one show. person is like, I, I actually think we should look into it. It's like, are you crazy if you could retard? And it just, just, you know, devolves from there. But that generates metrics. So let them come. I, I, sorry, last part on this, which is I remind people that when they attack, it's very similar to uh, shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. From a distance, it looks like you're doing something, right? But in the end, all you're doing is adding wood to the fire. Um, you know, the what PT Barnum, Barnum said a couple different ways, but you know, he said even bad publicity is free. There's no such uh, thing as bad plubis- publicity. As long as they get your name right. Yep. I'm a testament to that. So if I am on the phone, yeah, and I'm talking to my friend in New York, right, and he says it's dark, mm-hmm. and I'm here in California, right, and it's only uh, four or five o'clock, and the sun is still up. If the Earth is flat, right. shouldn't it be the same brightness everywhere at the same time? How does that yep. work? Okay. Two things. Uh, the, the obvious out of the way, which is when you see models of the flat Earth, and actually this one's not too terrible uh, because you can't see the sun and the moon you know, in, on here. They're, they're little lights that are So happening. where is the sun and the moon, well, the sun, in relationship to that model? Oh, oh, it's it's this tiny little dot. The the reason why, okay, first off, when you see the maps, when you when you look up flat Earth on Google, they draw the sun and the moon r- thousands of miles wide. 
Yeah, there you go. Thousands of miles wide, because if they didn't, you wouldn't be able to see it on the map. So for artistic purposes, you got to put the sun and the moon above it. However, the sun and the moon are so tiny by comparison that you would barely be able to see them at all. So it, let's just round down to like 50 miles wide. If it's 50 miles wide on that map behind you, it's a speck. It's a pixel. It's barely even a pixel, a quarter of a pixel. And you're saying, okay... If that's so that that eliminates most of it. The other thing that that helps though is the thickness of the atmosphere. It's why when you and there's some wonderful videos I could show you. When you when you see the sun going off in the distance, it's not setting. It's going away. And then eventually it just evaporates into the thickness of the atmosphere. Meaning, remember, what we're breathing in right now is only 99% transparent and it gets thickness, it compounds over time, right? To the point where it's, it's the, uh, the water example is easier to understand. Why can't you see a whale a mile away? Well, because you can't see through the, through the thickness of the water. Or high noon sun, divers will tell you, 200 feet, it's over. You, there is no more sun, right? right. So is, does, the sun, does the sun move? Yes. Or is it stationary? Nope. Sun moves. It is the sun moves like a like a needle on a record player. Uh, in fact, I couldn't. You, I'm not going to be able to do it justice here. But there's arms here, which are actually not not too. They're actually pretty accurate. And so the sun moves. So it's going around around like a mobile of a crib. Yep. Okay. Yep. And 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 because it's such a direct between the 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 size being so small, a directional light source, and the thickness of the atmosphere works just great. Absolutely works fantastically. Okay. Think I'm about it. Take your word for remember, it, and we're going to leave it up to the comments. Yeah, I know the comment. The comments will have tons and tons of, of various things, and I've I've heard them all before. But that's that's wonderful. It's again promoting discussion. I'm not here to convince you or even persuade you. I'm just been throwing the idea in your head and let the gears grind. See what happens. All right. So speaking of that, uh, mm -hmm. now is the point in the show that everybody usually comes to watch for, and that is usually where I give you control and let you ask me questions. But since you don't know me or anything about my channel, that would be boring. So <laughs> instead, give us your closing statements, uh, anything that I didn't ask or anything that you didn't cover that you want to tell us, Okay. and uh, along with uh, where they can, what website or YouTube channel everybody can go to to get more information okay. uh, about why the Earth is flat. How much time do I got? Uh, three or four minutes. Okay, good. Uh, first off, uh, if you're thinking about getting into flat earth, don't. And that's not reverse psychology. I'm saying this, this is an opening line of, uh, of one of the books I wrote, which was, it is a rabbit hole like no other. Meaning, it, and it's very much like the Matrix, which unfortunately, it's 25 years old this year. Hard to believe that um, it's a red pill, blue pill thing. Once you get past a certain point, you can't unsee it. So if you like your life the way it is, everything's thumbs up, every, you know, everything is awesome, right? And, and you go through your days and, you know, things are okay. Don't do it. Because if you do, I, and because I, I only say this because I've had people, it's like, you know, thank you for ruining my life. Now, it's a bit tongue in cheek when they tell me this. But I, I try to warn people. It once you can, and the reason is this: once you, know, you go flat, you never go back. The, pretty much, be, not because I convinced you though, but because you convinced yourself. You're the one that tore it down. You're the one that did your own research. Like it, like everybody, it's like you, what you'll do is you'll you'll watch a few videos, right? And then you'll look at a few websites. And then you will look at a few more. And next thing you know, two or three days have gone by, and you're like. You know, same same thing that ran through me and everybody else. Like, no, 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 no. This, this, there's no way, right? And you think you can solve it, right? It's like a children's puzzle box. From a distance, you, you see somebody playing with it, and they get frustrated, and they throw it down on the bench. You pick it up. It's like, what was wrong with this guy? This thing's easy. And the more you stare at it, the worse it gets, right? So do your own research. Again, don't take my word for it. Don't, for everything I've just said, take it with a grain of salt. Figure it out for yourself. But before you do, just know that once it happens, and we have, I'm not kidding you, it is not an exaggeration, we have a 99% retention rate. That's more than organized religion, because it's, because it's a red pill, blue pill thing. Once you get out, once you see, once, you, once the doubt's in your head, you know, eventually what happens is this tipping point, where the scales, you, you'll go to NASA, everybody will lean on NASA, right? Or pick your favorite space agency, but most of the time it's NASA, they're the originators, right? You'll go to them, and you'll see a warehouse full of boxes, and you just go, oh, yeah, I got this, we'll shut this down, and 
every box you open is just freaking few pieces of packing popcorn and you're going through and going through and going through and next thing you know you're out of boxes and you don't know what to do and there'll be these loose ends these threads you want to tug on and, and you don't know where what's what's happening after a while so uh, I don't want to go over the bullet points. They're all there for you to look at. I, again, we've been making content now for pushing 10 years. Some of us, I have been doing it for 10 years. So check it out or don't. You've been warned. And and if you like it, hey, send me an email later. I, I Every once in a while, I'll get an apology email from somebody. It says, I'm sorry I trolled you for as long as I did. It's... it's it is it's it's a fun ride if you do it uh the fa you know we have conferences we have meetups it's a it's a great kooky family um but it you know it covers a wide range of people uh the subject matter experts that i have on my channel the people that came forward uh they solidified for me all branches of the armed forces uh, air traffic controllers pilots uh surveyors all these guys same thing it's like yeah you know what you might be on to something so what website can they go to to see more information? You know, make it easy. Uh, just go into any search engine, type in Flat Earth Mark. That's, that's the easiest way. And go down whatever rabbit hole. I don't care if, you, if it's my content or other people's, because you're going to run into other people's content. Flat Earth Mark will get you there. Uh, there's books on Amazon. Again, Flat Earth Mark will get, get you there. The, the Netflix documentary is kind of fun if you want to see a snapshot of what we were like back in 2017. Give us um, the name of that documentary again. Uh, Behind the Curve which was just a side project for some film group down in Los Angeles. And they had, they, they had no faith in it. They hated us. And, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're getting into every freaking film festival they applied to. And then Netflix buys it. And then Amazon picks it up. And, and everybody picks it up. And it was awesome. Um, there's an app out there that I had nothing to do with called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. That's kind of fun. Um, there's people everywhere. So check it out. It's fun. Have a good time with it. Great. There you go. All right, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs>